An annular solar eclipse cuts through North America, the Orionids meteor shower peaks, and the two biggest planets in our solar system shine bright all night long. Let's take a look at what you can go out to see and enjoy in the night sky for October of 2023. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. Welcome to the night sky, your guide to the best objects and events to help you explore the heavens above. Let's begin the month of October by taking a look at the best meteor showers. To know exactly when and where you need to look, let's load up my favorite astronomy app Sky Safari to see when the Orionids are going to be peaking this October. To see the Orionids this year, go outside around 1 a.m. on the morning of October 22nd and look towards the east. There you will see the constellation Orion, slowly rising above the horizon. It's from this region of space that the pieces of Halley's Comet will streak through our atmosphere, creating the meteors that make up the Orionids. Expect about 15 to 20 meteors per hour, and remember that meteor showers take patience and dark skies to pick up the fainter ones. We leave the Orionids behind and move on to our main event this month, the annular solar eclipse that occurs on October 14th. It's important to point out that at no point during this solar eclipse will the moon completely cover the sun. So regardless of where you are and when you view it, you have to always be wearing protective solar gear that's certified to be used to look at the sun. On October 14th, North, Central, and South America will see the moon move in between the Earth and the sun. Unlike a total solar eclipse, the moon won't quite be large enough to cover the entire surface of the sun due to its current distance from Earth. So the event that some will see along the annular path is called a ring of fire eclipse. This event will begin in Eugene, Oregon around 9.16 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time and will travel through the southwest United States hitting San Antonio, Texas around 11.52 a.m. Central Daylight Time. After crossing the Gulf of Mexico, it enters Mexico and Central America before making its way into Colombia and Brazil before leaving South America and crossing into the Atlantic Ocean. Those of us not under the path of the Ring of Fire will still see an impressive partial solar eclipse across the vast majority of North, Central, and South America. From where I live on the east coast of the United States, about 40% of the sun will be covered by the moon during the peak of this event. If you're able to get out to enjoy or experience any part of this annular solar eclipse, which is really kind of a pre-show for the main event coming up in April 2024 when we have another total solar eclipse through North America. Please be sure to let us know about your questions and experiences with this event in the comment section below. Continuing on with the moon, let's take a look now at its phases. Whether you want to observe the moon or avoid the moon, it's important to start right here to plan out your month of observing or imaging. We've got a third quarter moon that's going to start off the month on October 6th, followed by a new moon on the 14th, first quarter moon on the 21st, and full moon on October 28th. The moon will also be paired up nicely with some of the brightest planets, with a close pass to Jupiter on October 1st, Venus on the 10th, Saturn on the 24th, and Jupiter again on the 29th. There's no greater sight right now in terms of the planets than Saturn. With its rings that everyone loves to view and image, it is out for the entire night if you look towards the south. I had an image sent in recently from Stephen Carpentier, a longtime subscriber to this channel, and it's a beautiful image of the ring structure of this incredible gas giant. Stephen, well done taking this picture of Saturn, and please keep up the great work that you're doing in astrophotography. And if any of you have any pictures that you'd like to share in astrophotography, please be sure to tag me and share them over on Instagram at Late Night Astronomy. Moving on from Saturn, there's another incredible gas giant that wants your attention, but you're going to have to stay up a little bit later to see it. 
Jupiter rises in the southeast around 10 p.m. to good heights to view it and image it. I've been out to take a peek at Jupiter a few times while I was completing a double star program through the Astronomical League in the recent weeks, but I'm planning on upping my observations every month as we approach the end of the year. Along with the two major gas giants, Venus reaches its highest point this month just before sunrise, and just like last month, Neptune sticks close to Saturn in the southeast, and Uranus is just behind Jupiter in the east throughout the month. Comets are one of the most exciting and unpredictable parts of this hobby. And even though there aren't any easy ones to get out to see in the night sky this month, I thought I would still mention a few that could be a good challenging target if you really enjoy hunting down these incredible objects. Let's begin with Comet 2P Enki, which will be an early morning target for the first few days of October near Venus. This is going to be a tough one even with a larger telescope. Just make sure to never look in the direction of where the sun may be rising or setting unless you know the sun is below the horizon. Another early morning target will be Comet 103P Hartley as it travels through the constellations Gemini and Cancer this October. For my friends in the Southern Hemisphere, Comet C2020V2ZTF moves to become primarily a southern target as it travels through the constellation Phoenix. And one more additional comet that's getting a little bit of conversation going over on CloudyNights.com is C2023H2 Lemon. This is going to be moving through the Ursa Major constellation and will be near the star Alcade at the end of October. It's had some pretty impressive increases in brightness over the past few weeks, so you might want to be checking some astronomy websites for that throughout the month of October to see what's going on with this comet. It's important to remember that dark skies and the moon being out of the way are going to be key to maximizing most of the objects in this portion of the video as we leave our solar system and explore the deep sky objects that make up our galaxy and beyond. To view them, let's go out around 9 p.m and face towards the northeast. There you will come across the Triangulum Galaxy M33. This object can actually be viewed from very dark locations with just the naked eye, but is also very susceptible to any light pollution. See if you can make out the spiral arms of this galaxy through your telescope if the sky conditions are good enough and dark enough. Next move over to the Little Dumbbell Nebula. This planetary nebula is quite faint and will definitely take a larger telescope to make out much of its detail, but it's a fun object to observe visually. Now let's move on really to three objects in one by studying the Great Andromeda Galaxy. To find the Andromeda Galaxy, make your way over to the constellation Andromeda until you find a blurry oval-shaped smudge that is a galaxy on a collision course with our own. Now when you're viewing Andromeda through a telescope, you'll probably have a hard time seeing the intricate details that showed up in this long exposure image, but you will be able to at least make out its core. Take your time studying Andromeda with a pair of binoculars or a telescope, and remember that the light that you're looking at has been traveling for over 2.5 million years to get to your binoculars or your telescope in your own backyard. Those are just some of the most incredible things that you can get out to see and image in the night sky for the month of October. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let us know of any questions or experiences that you have out observing or imaging in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.